it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa. Welcome to today's About Face Big Art Quest. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. If you're one of our very many brand new Sherpettes, new subscribers, hey, guys. Welcome to the Big Art Quest. This is where we kind of cover some more complicated, some more deep conversations about art, but we do it in a way that is really accessible and really easy to understand. We make it simple. Because no matter how complicated something is in art, it's actually, at its heart, something very simple, in my opinion. Yes. And so we like to break those down. This particular one has been kind of an adventure. This is a viewer-directed. This started with a viewer-directed live, which means everybody came into the live event. They were giving me suggestions. Mm -hmm. We were talking about what we wanted to create. I had some framework for you. It definitely went far afield. <laughs> And so let's talk a little bit about, let's, let's be like Sam and Dean from Supernatural and talk about the journey so far. So when we started out, you guys came and you gave me some suggestions. You thought you'd like the environment to be a mystical forest, some place that you could see fairies or unicorns and magical mushrooms. You know, you were thinking definitely a fairy, but some sort of dragon fairy. And she could be kind of like beautiful and, but a tomboy and smirky and, have a fire power and maybe a bubble bender. And then some crazy stuff started getting suggested and John's like going with all of it. And then we got a tree with a face. We got a mirror portal that she's looking in. Maybe she's got the dragon's egg and this kind of green dragon is there in the forest. And I did this crazy sketch and then I went to the drawing board and no. I needed, I realized that I needed to make a couple of things. Now what, what, I love, what I love about all this is that John went with all this. It's, it's definitely. I'm not here. Right, I don't right. get. I don't get to see the comments. Right. So, like, so I'm. I'm. I'm the one who just was just like, yes, okay, we're just we gonna do John? that. Is that cool? <laughs> <laughs> is that how this is gonna go? Just so you know, can we? Can 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 can, can all of the shirt bets that are here with us? I'm gonna bend this so you guys can see it better. So, and then I kind of went into our group, the big art quest group, right? About yeah. base group, and I showed you the process of how I get to here. Mm -hmm. how the sketches evolve, how I keep iterating on things, why we use tracing paper in this process to keep the things that we love and refine the things that we need to work on. Um, she's got a traceable. She was the video before this one. Um, we went with the name Viridian because we just loved it. Yep. That was such so many good. Okay, so you guys wrote in stories. We read them. We loved them. Mm. You guys wrote poetry. We read it. We loved it. <laughs> You guys wrote ideas, what you thought the whole scene was about, what you thought it was about. And we just loved it. And so we were like, all right, well, this is about portraits right now. So we did Viridian to tell her story. And you guys created her with me. We got the scale and we got all the stuff. But how do we go back to, we said, we're going to do the full landscape with you because you guys asked for it. How do we go back to that? And so when we first talked about it, we had yeah. oriented this in what's called a landscape. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to try to adjust that a little bit so that okay. they can see that using yeah. using RoboCam, I think. Do, right. do, do, oh, there we go. So okay, RoboCam can see it really so good. There we go. So when we initially were laying this out, we did this as a landscape. And when I was looking at the design for this, I had a couple problems. Everything is in the same plane. If you think about it in a design sense... Even though there's a lot happening in this world, it's really super boring. Yeah. Super boring. Not compelling at all. Because everything exists in this one strata. And I was like, all right, so if what can I do? How can I get all the elements of the story in that you guys are talking about? And we, I thought about playing with scale, making the dragon very large and the trees very small. But then we were going to lose Viridian. Mm -hmm. as part of the story um another thing there was a huge amount of anxiety about our our fairy our dragon fairy about viridian maybe being a kidnapper of the dragon <laughs> egg. nobody was feeling great about that so i decided i definitely wanted mama dragon to retain her egg yes so that we kept in the emotional space we wanted to in the story because we wanted viridian to be playful Maybe cheeky, maybe a tomboy, maybe a rebel in her community, but we weren't trying to make her, like, the villain of the story. So we talked about this tree, kind of like an end with a face, and we talked about this space and this magical space. And I realized what I needed to do was change the orientation. Mm -hmm. So we changed the orientation. This traceable is up on the web page. Yep. Right uh, now, uh, I'll be dropping it in group as well on the Facebook Big Art Quest group. Mm -hmm. 
So you can find that on uh, this PDF, right, on the website. And so that's available to you because I realize you may not be drawing yet. You may be using a lot of art skills. You might have been on 2016's quest. You may be on this quest and you're like, man, I got a lot of art skills down, but drawing just isn't my skill yet. That's why I always include the traceable. But I do like to talk about the process of the design. So what I did here was I created the first focus of the piece, which was the m part you were most excited about, which is the dragon. I think we've done dragons on the show five times. This they've come in. And I, I probably come, I like to say I have, I'm kind of an old school dragon. You gotta be thinking like writers of Pern, <laughs> right? Kind of or, or old school dragon. And so I've got her here and she's got her egg and the egg is cracking and I'm, I am definitely gonna interject some crystals and she's on a rock. And then coming away from her up is this mystical hill. Now what I've managed to do is create one, two, three eyes here, which creates a viewing triangle. And with the path going up, keeps the person who's looking at the painting from just disappearing off the painting. Mm -hmm. So when you're making a picture, you want to imply that some of the world exists off the canvas that prevents uh, designs from being stagnant. So by allowing some of our dragon to not be on the canvas and she's in the forefront, she's in the four most important part of the picture plane, it tells us this world is bigger than the square, than the peephole that we're looking at. By using this triangle method with the, with the road going up, right? Cause that's kind of like an arrow to her face. And she, look what we did here. We talked about, we didn't put her fully central, did we? We put her off as if she's peeking in. What does that tell us about her world? That her world is bigger than the mirror that we're seeing. See how we're being storytellers in this process? So she's, she's off. I have the tree here and I didn't want him to be part of the eye story. So I made him sleeping or resting. He's, he's not activated in the canvas, but he's there. He's a part of it. Now here we're going to do some crazy sky and this is going to be definitely mystically like green and you're going to feel for us. She's going to be a green dragon. We're going to have a lot of fun with all of this. And what I did is I transferred this onto the canvas. I strengthened it with pencil and to keep my pencil from bleeding into my paint, I hit it. Well, John hits it, but with just a light little bit, a mist like a fixative of my, um, Varnish. Right. So my pencil doesn't bleed into my, but I don't want to do so much, otherwise I could have underbinding. Other things that I want to say that you're going to need. So what we're going to have to do. Hey, everybody, how you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> you, cinnamon has just been going, so you guys know. As And one of the things that we were talking about is that she has been really, she's been, she, she's been painting a lot, and her shoulder's a little sore. So. Yeah. You're gonna, we're gonna have to, you're a little drip there. <laughs> I failed at drinking today. Your you straw guys, failed. You got, you're out with your kids and you're like drinking something, you're being all cool, and your kids are like, you're dribbling, mom. Well, well, the cool thing is, at least you got me here. You could be just, if you were a solo YouTuber, you could have had the little dribble there for like hours. I could have. You could but have been. Look at me, fixing it. <laughs> Thanks to you. It's all going wrong here. So, but we got hey, over 300 human. people. We got like over, we've had, we've been Sherpa this entire time. They've just been so happy. I just was like, I was gonna come over and like flip on mute. Music and yeah, go ahead. Let's stuff. give us some music. Let's take a breath. I know I need to take a breath. I get a lot of notes. Like you talk really fast, you talk a lot. Yeah. I do find that talking helps convey the information I'm teaching. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and it's you know just one of those things. But you know, Cinnamon's been. Uh, we wanted to make sure she wiggles her arms there because you, know, yeah. you know it's good to see all you guys. Thank you for I'm coming be and hanging out. I'm moving a little bit less. <laughs> yeah. Than usual. And, and, and that's because you get your shoulders a little, a little sore. So, um, yeah, I have hypothyroidism. Yep. And sometimes you get inflammation in your joints associated with it. Um, so that's just something that happens to me along the way. And right now I'm just kind of having a flare up. Yeah. This kind of a thing. So I'm going to keep today shorter and we're going to break this into a couple things. But then I realized that's great for you guys because this is going to let you get it on canvas and do your tonal study. Mm -hmm. get that resolved when we come back for the big work. And also, so I can let you know, two new materials you probably need to get, possibly three. But they're, yeah. they're not crazy expensive, and there's really economical versions of all of them. So it's okay. Cool. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, 
Okay, so I've got I've got the sketch on the canvas. Oh, so I've got it over here. Let me go to. So you yeah, can see it on this. That, and we got a, It's really you got really light sketched okay. in there. So. So the thing we're gonna do while we're together is I'm gonna take about 20 minutes and show you guys um, how to do a tonal study okay. with umber, which is a brown. You guys can use any brown you have. You could even do a tonal study with blue. By the way, you want you want is a transparent color, a color that's not highly opaque. Mm -hmm. And you're going to paint in glazes and build up some values. And we're going to talk about how to determine the light source in a fantasy painting and how to represent that. And we're going to show you how to do a tonal set study. If you've done 2016's quest, this is also called a grisai. Well, yeah, that's right. Look at me like being Mr. Miyagi. You waxed on, <laughs> waxed off, no painting thing. <laughs> but it basically, yeah, it's going to be a grisai. So I'm going to show you guys how to get the tonal study on this and then make sure that I... Because here's the thing. As you're painting things can happen and you can be yep. so excited about a project that you can push yourself too far everyone in the chat was just letting you know that you should be just be see it's so much better be <laughs> yes that's why i'm like talking about that so i'm gonna just i'm not gonna push this i'm gonna do i'm just gonna take this like to where it's okay and healthy for me and mm -hmm. you should be doing the same things in your own art practice you know you're not under pressure a lot of you guys are like, I'm behind in the quest. There was no speed component to this activity. That's no. why we love YouTube, because you can be like, eh, when it's, I get to it. It's perpetually on your own speed. <laughs> so that's an important thing to realize and to recognize that even I have to recognize that I have my own speed and sometimes have to slow down. Even if I'd like to power through and do like a seven hour paint, I still have to recognize that I have my limitations and you should at home as well. So I am going to show you how to do the tonal study. I am going to show you um, how to find light sources in a fantasy piece, right? Because you don't really have a reference photo. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about where light sources could come from and how we can use our tonal study to start showing those. And then we're going to come back again and finish this after Shark Week. Yes. So hopefully everybody's cool with that. It's like... But you guys are going to rock a painting that's going to trip out people around you. So if this is something you've been wanting to do, this is the path to do it. Let me tell you about the materials I want you guys to have by next week. Not next week. Ne next, next quest. So this is a teal, okay? You can also get an aqua. I am posting in group and on the page, on the website and everywhere, all the exchanges. There's a... Um, Goodness gracious, there's some craft paint exchanges for this. They're like a, just a couple, like a dollar. So this is, you can look for this. This is teal, aqua, These, this is the color range, and then a magenta. Primary magenta, medium magenta, quinacridone magenta, any of those will work. Any of those will work. You're looking for this really hot, hot pink. You can't really mix this color that effectively. So it's great to get it. And again, I found it. You know, Dollar in Raleigh, I found it in Galleria, I found it in Craft Paints. So feel like you can find these. We're going to definitely show those links. So you're like, oh, I don't, have to, I don't have to grab new things. These are good paints, however, to invest in because we're going to be moving into a lot of these color combinations, especially over winter. The other material I would like you guys to consider getting is zinc white or mixing white. Either one is fine. Because we're going to be doing some mist effects. We're going to be doing some atmospheric magical effects. And so to do that, we're going to be able to need to use some real transparent color colors. Mm. But let's get our, stu our study in. All right. talk about light sources. And I'm going to go until my little shoulder feels, eh. Yeah. This is raw umber. Um, and this is just, I have a big giant tube of it. <laughs> and I'm going to put out some glazing medium. And this one is gloss, though you could use matte or satin on this particular process. And I'm going to get a small brush. I'll get this small. I like filberts. So I'm going to get the small filbert. This is number two filbert. Um, one of the things we're going to talk about is the places that light can come from. So obviously light can come from the sky, right? Mm -hmm. Celestial bodies such as the sun, such as stars, such as the moon can cast light. The other place in a painting like this that light sources can happen is any areas that you're trying to say are magic. Because these can have an otherworldly illumination. So we, and you could, you could, if you chose to illuminate inside the egg, mm -hmm. be reasonable to maybe illuminate around the eye or nose if she's 
breathing fire, that would be a place of illumination. But I'm thinking for this piece, we're going to keep most of our illumination celestial, sky-based, and also in this magic source. Cool. So I'm going to come, and I've got my little brush wet, and I've got my little brown out. Again, you could use a blue, any transparent color, and I'm going to come here on the inside of my little mirror, and I'm going to start with my first value. I want this space to be getting lighter as it comes into her. And the nice thing about doing umber studies is, is it's like doing a pencil sketch and just looking for the grayscale. It allows me, let me get some glazing medium, to start telling values and checking my values before I apply color. Sometimes it's easier to see values before it's easier to see hue. So values being is how dark it is and hue being the color that it is. Hmm. So the umber is the hue and the value is the... I'm going to put my Viridian out so I can see her face because I already <laughs> did her painting. Didn't I? I already painted my girl. Now, there's a so question gonna, here. I have an answer. I'm in a shadow right under her. Is, is matte finish the same as a fixative? You know, I'd have to look at the product because sometimes these things have names that you think they're one thing and then you get to looking at them and you're like, wait, that's a whole other thing. I guess there's lots of things that you could be a fixative for. Whether there's that's a, Yeah, there's a lot of things. I like a spray fixative because it keeps the pencil from moving. But I guess there's fixatives for pencil and pastel and yes, chalk. Yes, those would not work effectively on this. Okay. Because this is a canvas, so you're going to be painting over that. You definitely need to fix it with something for acrylic paint, which is why I like to sometimes use a varnish. I'm going to start, you know, I'm layering the values that I might have, right, with my brown. And there's a couple ways you can get this. You can glaze, 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 or if you wish to, you can also come in with black and create another deeper value range. And this can be valuable depending on what you're doing. Mm. You know what I mean? If you want to come in with some black and, and deepen that, we may do that. But the whole point of this is to start to look at the painting first and be like, where's, where's the light? Well, sure, the top of her forehead is lighter than this area under the eye, but so by even putting this in now, and if I were to say, and in this, if you're going to include black, because it tends to be a little opaque, you're going to want to be very, very delicate with it. Use very little. Treat it like cayenne pepper. But you can see you can come in and start to do this. A lot of fantasy painters that you'll see out there will do these types of studies. Now, can can you under? Hey, whoops, whoops, where to go? Whoop, there goes. Can you explain underbinding and will this create underbinding? So this will not create underbinding. In fact, this is a fantastic way to get this value in and not have underbinding. Um, because I'm using glazing medium and because I'm using a naturally transparent paint, I'm not doing washes. Uh -huh. I'm going to have perfectly fine uh, binding when I come over with my other glazes. Um, when we covered this on the grisaille, this is why this is such a preferred method for so many artists, and many, many oil artists work grisaille. Gotcha. Especially if their work is more detailed. So that's just something that you can think about. Yeah, I, I kind of like these umber studies. I think they're really neat. Well, they allow us, if you guys think about it, the times that we've done these, they allow you guys to get some effects and some reality that maybe you wouldn't normally get. Yeah. So I'm going to around the tree where our tree spirit is holding this portal. I will at some point be adding some mystical illumination. So I'm going to have to think about where would I have my shadows around him. If he's mystically illuminated. So mm -hmm. definitely I'm going to want to start giving him some shape. And this isn't really the same as like, oh, I'm doing a painting. This is where I'm thinking about, well, if this crook is here, where would this shadow go? Go between this root. Right? That would be a deep shadow. 
and you can start to test the form of your design elements. You can even come in and say, I know I'm, it's going to have to be real deep right here. And as you're glazing and as you're painting, right, look at this. These story elements will start to come together. A, in realistically, if you're doing fantasy art, you should expect your value study to sort of be something that you work on for a week or so. If you go too dark, well, this needs my little tool, you can um, absolutely lighten it back up with white paint. <laughs> you sure that what you're doing there? Well, I'm looking for my little pokey tool. There it is. It's in a little jar there. Okay, so this is my star oh. tool, but it's also an unplug my paint tool. Unplug your paint tool. <laughs> yes, a pop my pouncer out tool. So you can always put some white out. If you get if you get too dark somewhere, you can paint it back. You can layer, layer, layer. This is something you can work on for a while, and you can take this to a place where you get real happy with it. Um, if you have been a person who, in the past, I'm using a dark value here have been given a lot of grief, save for being a perfectionist, you have now found your jam. A lot of the artists that you guys share with me that you love use this process pretty, pretty intently. So see, I'm, I'm thinking about light sources and where my shadows would be. Where is the shadow? Got my black, got my brown, got my weird little bit of clump. <laughs> and you're just like, where is it? Where's my shadow? And as you look for your shadow, like the shadow under the lip, you'll start to see things take a shape, right? Where'd you go in there? That gives them form in their world. You can even start to imply some texture here if you wanted to like create some bark texture. Look at that. There we're talking about bark texture. So by slowing down and giving yourself a moment in the world, in this space, and not throwing hue into the mix immediately. Not that we won't, because we will. We will, we will. You know, I can come back and really groot him up. I can put <laughs> mold and moss on him. Okay. Coming in here and thinking about like the kinds of objects I want. You know, as if I get the value studies on the hill and I get the value studies on the dragon, I can still come back and paint on the surface of it and go, I want mushrooms here. I want flowers here. Really stupendous fantasy pieces often have this as a process behind them. This being the umber study? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you look at like uh, artists like Joe McCrola, right? You can look him up and watch him. He's going to do a value study. Before he starts putting the, the colors in there, making those complicated decisions, he's going to decide where are my areas of light, where are my areas of dark. Mm-hmm. You know, where am I... Where's my form happening at? So you can leave white where you want it to be quite bright. And this gives you a minute to think, well, would there be something here? Where would there be something? You know what? We don't I have just put a little shadow here. While you're doing that, I'm going to check something. Are we having internets? No, no, we're having fine internets. Ah. I actually was... Uh, so you can just see how like these two little characters are starting to find a space in this world, right? Yeah. 
What can I do with these two things? And keeping it transparent, being able to glaze, 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 and layer will definitely help me work that out before I try to work it out. Start telling our story. Maybe I can do this. <gasps> hey, look at that. What would you do? I was able to get picture in picture with the palette there. Oh, that's cool. So then I don't have to keep switching back and forth, and you oh. can just sort of do my thing. Do your thing. Right, because I'm just, I'm just trying to catch a little volume, just trying to talk about things. You know, how would they be? What would they be? Pretty neat. I'm putting these feathers here, so important stuff in a painting. These paintings don't build like so. Some of our paintings on the channel build really quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, they come together and they're and they and they find their space in quick order. Mm -hmm. But a lot of fantasy work. You know, a lot of imagination space. It takes something of you. And maybe that's why um, many of us appreciate it so much as an art form. I, I'm always surprised when it's not appreciated, actually. What do you mean? Well, like sometimes in some circles, like it's like, oh, well, it's just fantasy art. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> and if you think about what it took to build it, that's still. Just fantasy art. Right. Not among the most popular and lucrative sections of the art market in the world. So just like, you know, it can be hard to loosen up and uh, tell a story that's more abstracted. It's very hard to fabricate and build from nothing a world like this. Yeah. And as artists, you have to retain artists that work in this field. You know, have to retain so much knowledge about lighting, about how worlds are built. You know, and just because somebody might use a digital tool doesn't mean that they haven't really worked it. Right, yeah. I mean, it takes just as much effort to learn a digital tool as it does a I'm real gonna tool. I'm going to have to move this so I'm not working That's my okay. shoulder. Yeah. You can so, move around. How's your shoulder doing? Yeah, we're, so we're doing okay so far. I'll let you know when I'm getting there. But I definitely wanted to give something oh, of value you. today as we're going through this. And also a lot of people promised that they would paint it. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing here is I'm using, I love this little filbert. I'm using this uh, little filbert and I'm pulling this off. This, this is a filbert. number two black pearl filbert. I, I just, I hear you singing this little filbert of mine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> And artists. see, folks, this is why I don't sing. Artists used to do this thing where they would literally create filberts by just wearing their brush out. Yeah. They would, wait, run that by me again? They would create their filberts by, like, painting and rubbing it and trying to round the brush out. You just oh, have to make yeah. a filbert. Yeah. You'd just and like then some brush manufacturers took pity. So a lot of media is, like, I hear a lot of speculation where people are like, I think the big paint companies are trying to make me bar buy gesso. <laughs> They're going to trick me into getting, you need gesso. <laughs> right? And it's, what it really is, is that artists will try to do a technique. Yeah. And a lot of times they're not great scientists. And so they'll try to do a technique and there'll be elements or problems in the technique. I think uh, one of the things we're seeing right now is cells, right? The creation of cells in fluid art. Mm hmm Yep. And which is awesome, right? We should all want that. And so they're trying a bunch of different stuff to get the techniques, but maybe they're using oils, which is not really advised for acrylics mm -hmm. in any way. But what I honestly believe will come out of this is that the paint companies will see that the artists are trying to get this effect and, you know, underbinding their paintings in an effort to get it. I'm using a lighter color here. Yeah. So they'll develop a product that will consistently and predictively make cells and not damage the 
archivalness of the product. Because they have engineering departments. Because they have engineering departments. And I also think because they, they probably get worn out answering questions like, why my painting fall off the canvas? I, I, I love talking to the engineers and paint companies because it's like they, they see these as awesome challenges. Like, we must provide artists new ways of doing this cool new thing. And we will use science to make it happen. And sometimes they hit it. And sometimes, you know, I mean, not, not every product's a win. <laughs> I, I would say that... They, they, they do a far better job engineering than naming. Oh, my goodness. What is going on with the naming? So I'm just trying to create some shape to my um, my little log here. I think I'm going to move my lighting, my deep shadow, in a little bit because there might be a backlit from backlight from the sky. Some, yeah. A little bit the starlight, and then there's this going to be this magic glow light. So I'm going to start rotating my oh, shadow on the log anymore, huh? into um, a slightly off the edge position. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Maybe it is. I don't know. It's interesting to me. But you can see that we're making this study. We're we're talking about this space. Coming here. I'll look for something and be like, oh, I don't feel like that value works. Mm. So how are you doing there? How's your how's your arm holding up? Still okay. I think I have about, I don't know, like 10 minutes more in me. That, that, sounds, that sounds about reasonable. But hopefully everyone's oh, getting the idea of what we're doing here. Yeah. And where this is going. You know, and so how we might get this story told, this complicated story. Mm -hmm. That you guys gave me, viewers suggested. I don't know. Do we have any questions? Oh my god! I, uh, we had a. It's been very chatty in here. Lots of people are just saying hello to each other oh. and hanging out. It's it's. We had a pretty big crowd here too. So uh, yeah, we, we've been we've been Sherpa this entire time. That's and, awesome. Uh, oh, and, and I think Chris plays games is here too. So. Hi, Chris plays games. How you doing, man? So it's uh it's been pretty it's it's been pretty chatty. There's been a, a pretty lively group of Sherpettes out here hanging out. They're having a good time. A lot a lot of people trying, you know, talking about their different design elements. Oh cool. Saying hello to each other. It's been a it's been a really nice uh, a nice Sherpette hanging out kind of time too. Well, sometimes we need those. Mhm. Mm sometimes we need to just hang out with each other kind of time and just talk about the process like what's the process. Oh yeah, and Stephanie's here. Hi Stephanie. Stephanie's getting all geared up for Shark Week, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, Cassie, so Kim Sim, and Gail. Hi, Kim Sim. Hi, Gail. They're all here. I, we have lots of our friends are here hanging out today. So, I love you know. it when Kim Sim comes by. I love it when Gail comes by. Hi. That's hard to... I think and Mona's here. Look at Hi, that. Hi, Mona. So I should give you some bubbles for this and some music just because it's like, I don't know. I feel I'm like still it's, painting, which is like, if you, like it's, again, it's, guys, like... I am respecting my space, but it is important that when you, when you have something going on, that you just go, okay, that's just where I'm at today, and I'm going to respect where my body's at, and I'm going to do my artwork in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> and allow my physical form to heal while my mind continues to be super creative. Let's bubble it up. You want to bubble Dance more? stiffly. <laughs> you dance stiffly. You know what? It's good to dance because dancing helps, helps loosen your body up. Right? Helps loosen mm -hmm. those joints up. Make sure that you know you're looking at cinnamon. She's like, I'm gonna do the stand in place dance because today my shoulder is hurting. I'm not gonna do my crazy arms okay. dancing. <laughs> you wanna give everyone a fan day. Okay. You are. Yeah. She's she's been, she's been <laughs> I'm like I'm gonna like, oh no, she's all no, no, no. I don't wanna <laughs> now you got me all feeling weird. <laughs> Let's all feel weird together. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll all be awkward live on air at the same awkward time. Awkward live on air. Hey, at least we can we can we can acknowledge it, right? Yes. No. Please. I I believe acknowledge that always. I love my little hill and the the path going up. Mm hmm. I dig my little path so much. My path makes me uber happy. Let me get my little key or back I just there. feel like I'm going to do like flowers and weird little plants and mushrooms. I don't know. A lot to say. I'm going to have some fun with it. So we're just definitely drilling deep now. Yeah. Now one of the things that I'm doing is I'm improving on my sketch with my path. What, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm just trying to make it a more interesting path where the dirt and everything is more fascinating. Mm hmm Like you would in a landscape. Because, you know... Footpaths are very rarely 
paved. I mean, this could have been, I could have cobblestone this whole thing and said some magic wizards thought that they had to go to this portal a lot and therefore, but then that would tell a story. If I cobblestone it, then you would know that this is, a, this is probably a frequently traveled path. And we're trying to tell the story that she snuck here and maybe it's not. So I, therefore it's going to be like more of a dirt path. It's been walked dirt on. Path. Some initiates have come here. You thought about this. It's world building, right? That's what we're always doing as artists. We're world building. I'm wiggling my little brush around. And what I'm trying to do is just track out little bits of well thought out earth. Yeah. Well thought out earth is important and it's important to you know just kind of think about the angles of stuff and you know we have to name the dragon now we've named viridian yeah. what's the dragon's name tree's name everybody needs a name so say we're just working this you know there's there's a couple kinds of art there's what i like to call magic trick art which is it's just magic to watch it together um, Decker is my favorite of these artists because he's super honest about it. <laughs> like, you know you came for that. And he's going to show you how lights and darks very quickly come together to create a story. But sometimes, it, you know, the other kind of magic trick art is sort of a show you that, you know, someone can paint. And a lot of the process is sort of edited or hidden. Mm. It's a hidden process. So what I'm trying to do is just not hide the process here so you guys can see what is reasonable to put in front of you to expect in your own journey, you know, if you were to do some project like this. Dragon I love the crystals. They're going to be crunchy. fine. <laughs> Dragon should be named Crunchy. Crunchy. <laughs> Does she seem like a crunchy? I don't know. I think she might crunch you for calling her crunchy. I feel in my gut she objects to crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be a lot of fun to paint. I think I might have just put paint all over my nose. I'm just saying it now before I turn around. Maybe. Not really sure. That's all right. A little bit of paint on, on your nose so, is, is, is good. You know, definitely, definitely check the pages, check the groups. So you know that you need those n the two new colors that you really want, and you want those in your kit. Mm. Those are colors you're going to want in your kit anyways. But there's craft options for them. So don't feel like, you know, oh, I can't get golden right now, or I can't get Liquitex. Don't feel like then you're just super stuck. Because you're not mm -hmm. stuck. There are economical options. Enjoy them. Yes. <laughs> you you could have used the words, uh, could use a play on words and call the dragon prime, like prime viridian. Oh, that's cool. Mer Miller came up with that. Mm -hmm. That's odd. We have some creative people. We do. I am giving pun points we have, for Shark Week dude, all week. The puns have been thick and awesome. I have loved it. They have been wonderful. More puns. So I'm starting to tell some dark values on the hill. These will be rocks or things that are peeking out from the grass. Yeah. You know, that's what we're going to do, do. You don't need double. As I work on this, I will post updates too. Mm, I see you leaning on your easel. Uh, yeah. Are you okay? Right. No, no, no. You can totally no, do it. No, I'm getting there. I, I, I wanted to get through the whole study, but I'm getting there. I can feel it. Yeah. If you're, if you're feeling it, we've got. I'm a, feeling it. All right. So that's that's. I think this is where we should rest then today. I can't stop the way <laughs> I paint on the brush. This is like this is like when I take the I have to take you. How have to take her paint away from her? Because. So it's what I'm going to do is I'm going to rest it. I'm going to respect it, and I'm going to rest it. I would definitely encourage you. Even if you're feeling really compelled to continue to do that in your own practice. As I paint on this piece, I will post updates in the group. Um, it will go up on the page. We'll tweet it out. You know, we'll definitely keep you guys mm -hmm. up on it so you're able to work on this at home. 
definitely use a traceable if you need to get it on a canvas. Um, you know, if you're on the fence about like, can I do this? I may I highly encourage you to go for it. Just the process of learning how this piece is put together will change a bunch of stuff in your art practice. Now, Tina was, Hi, Tina. she was cu curious. She was like, wouldn't it be better for your shoulder if you were painting on a tabletop? No, no. Um, so, I, uh, body positioning wise, I'm pretty careful. Like I keep myself in good posture, um, whether I'm painting tabletop or standing and keep myself in good posture. But what happens to me is just sometimes joints will get inflamed. Mm. And so it just seems to be one of those things related to hypothyroidism. And it's just gotta, if you, if you Treat listen to it and let it just, if you drink a bunch of anti inflammatory I'm going to drink a bunch of beet juice today is what I'm going to do. We treat it like a sports injury. I treat it like a sports injury, and I just sort of ice it and let it rest. And yeah. then as soon as I can feel the inflammation goes down, I'm generally fine to get right back to painting. Yeah. But if I don't. <laughs> yeah. Then it's days. Then days. she gets to binge watch you Netflix. Yes. Then I binge watch a show on Netflix. <laughs> but there's a show hole right now, so I can't. So, yeah. This is and they didn't come back with Outcast for some reason on season two. And I had just been watch Outcast season one. And, and it was supposed to be out. It was announced as out everywhere. But then it wasn't, which was very <laughs> stressful to me. So, I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> Anyways, not your problem. <laughs> the scheduling you of other people's. Th they, you know they held it off because of Walking Dead, which I don't even get. Because those shows, that's not the same network. Yeah. Breathe. Just breathe. You should breathe. Have some balloon. Have some. Have some. Have some Texas snowflakes. Texas snowflakes. You know, guys, we but love you. But you guys have a bunch of fun stuff coming, and I'm gonna rest this up so we're good for Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. For we're sure. We're gonna do Saturday, and we're gonna rock Saturday. And again, I'll keep posting this up, and we'll meet again. And we're gonna be. This is gonna be like the biggest project that we've done on the quest. So. Definitely, definitely hope you'll participate with me. Yes. I love my bubbles. Love your bubbles, too. Love you guys. You guys be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Take care of yourselves. I'm sending out a wish to a very special friend who I said I would not name, but I'm wishing you're taking care of yourself, too. You know who you are. Take care of your health and well-being as well. Love you guys. See you with the easel really soon. Bubbles.